If, for any reason, the winner is unsuccessful, some of you may die, but it's a sacrifice I am willing to make. Hi. I'm not gonna do the whole sigh thing and I don't wanna make this video nonsense. Let's be real. One of us is gonna have to make this kind of video and I know everyone has their own unique ways of talking to Lucasfilm in their own special ways. Whether it's yelling at them or yelling at people calling them names. I'll leave it to those people, you know, everyone can express in their own way because at the end of the day Us Star Wars fans are very passionate, but now it's my turn to talk I'm mainly going to talk towards I guess Lucasfilm and those who willingly trying to defend the Acolyte Which is currently airing right now. We're three episodes in and I'm pretty sure everyone knows what's going on especially with the retcons and the lore, making Anakin not even special anymore. I mean, you already took away his uh, prophecy, but you took away his birth? And don't get me started with those witches. The Acolyte is the cringiest, dumbest show I've ever seen in my life. It truly is maybe the She-Hulk of Star Wars. A fanfic written by a five-year-old who only cares about shipping certain characters and blatantly ignores logic on how everything works in every scenario because when you're a writer you have to make sure that everything makes sense sometimes you can let things slide in order to make the scenes look cool but again it's got to make sense otherwise your audience would notice how dumb it is but this video is beyond the acolyte at this point because now i feel the same way i felt when i first watched the Last Jedi. I'm not sure if it's a bit worse. I I, I don't know what it is. It's just a, it's like a weird feeling of emptiness inside. Like as if the child in me just died. And my expectations for the Acolyte were low. But I think just witnessing a piece of media that was so bad. I find it hard to believe that someone was paid millions of dollars to write this and it just breaks my heart because i'm someone who's learning how to write and i'm not the only one there are many others like me and sometimes we're told we're not good enough and yet we see stuff like this being greenlit and shown to the world and it does nothing but damages the brand i guess a few disclaimers are in order before we keep going first off i'm not going to do any heavy cursing this is more of a serious talk between you and me, Lucasfilm, or I guess whoever's listening to. I want to put my word out without sounding like some angry child, because I think we're past that point now, especially with this garbage. And second, any of you Disney fans or recent fans who likes this stuff, that's totally fine. You can like whatever you want. Don't have a hissy fit when someone else doesn't like the thing that you like. We're all allowed to express how we feel whether we like it or not. So don't go up and call me a bigot. I almost took a knife for a gay kid when I was 10 years old. So you can just shut up and sit down and listen. If you don't want to, that's fine. I hope you have a nice day and have a nice life. Let's keep going. I think it's safe to say that I'm not the only one who cherishes Star Wars growing up as a kid. For the longest I can remember, Star Wars was definitely the first film I've seen, definitely one of them, or it could be the Pokemon movie, I don't know, if we're counting from recent memory in my childhood. All I know is I keep the VHS collection of the special edition of Star Wars, which yes, that special edition, the one with uh, the unnecessary CGI that George adds in, definitely I hold it for a special place in my heart. I know people don't like that version of Star Wars, but I keep it. I still keep it with me to this day. It's on my shelf right now. I'm looking at it. And I just cherish it. It's something that I just refuse to let go. Obviously, everyone knows the story. We all grew up with Luke Skywalker. You know, a very classic hero. The perfect example of how to do a hero's journey with the original trilogy. And as a kid, I was blown away. I was blown away by the spaceships. The lightsabers. I always liked swords. They're so cool. The fact that a sword made of plasma that can cut through anything? My goodness. It's a kid's favorite toy to use. <laughs> I remember my mom got me the uh, the one where it's Anakin's saber and you can turn it from blue to red. 
I thought that was a cool toy. But that's mainly from the prequels. Which, yes, I did grow up with the prequels, I guess. I enjoyed Phantom Menace. Attack of the Clones, I guess, is my least favorite. But the best part was definitely when all the Jedi show up to fight the droids. That was cool. And Revenge of the Sith still has one of the best lightsaber duels in Star Wars history. But yeah, I grew up with the original trilogy, you know? That was the one thing Dad left after, you know, parents split. Boo-hoo, I know. I don't make that as an excuse in my life. When it comes to growing up and dealing with bullies who made fun of you for being a Star Wars nerd or just a nerd in general when it comes to superheroes and stuff. Again, everyone who grew up in the 90s, or I guess who grew up with Star Wars in general. I'm not sure about the sequel stuff, but I can speak for originals and prequels that we were all bullied. We were basically the outcasts in a group. Sometimes we have to keep it a secret that we were nerds. And I feel like it should be good these days to be a nerd. And I guess in some fandoms it is. But for the Star Wars fandom, uh uh-uh. If you don't like anything that Lucasfilm put out recently, then no, you're not welcomed. I've already had experiences of me being some clickbaity rager, Disney is bad, ruined Star Wars, whatever. But at the end of the day, it that you gotta play the game on YouTube. And if you watch the videos, it's not all that bad and ragey anyways. But again, people always, always look at the surface level of things. They never bother to look deep into the situation. <laughs> Sounds like most people in life, right? But tell me this, Lucasfilm. Truly, with a straight face, you think the Star Wars fandom is inclusive and welcoming to everyone? When your own writing team is insulting those who criticize their work because it's either not good and could be better or they're focusing on things that don't belong in Star Wars and you shun us for it. But we want to try new stuff, do something different and daring for Star Wars. How's that going? Especially with Luke Skywalker, you know, the hero that inspired heaps of children back in the day. He was one of my four greatest heroes growing up as a child. And I guess in fiction in a way, because let's be honest, in the real world, (laughs) not much inspiration out there. I always gravitated towards, you know, films and TV shows growing up as a kid. And so the four greatest heroes in my life were Luke Skywalker, Optimus Prime, Spider-Man, and Superman. When I was a child, I was always inspired from the qualities of their character. Doing the right thing. Always be hopeful. You know, give that optimism towards life when things are rough. And one of my greatest heroes, my childhood heroes, dies alone in a planet where he's not surrounded by friends and family. Just for a gotcha moment. So that he passes the torch to a character that nobody likes yeah i guess she has some fans but that's the minority and i'm pretty sure fans of anakin skywalker feel the same way as well i feel like he has it worse but i don't know it could be both anakin and luke thinking more about it i think anakin probably has it worse because he is well he was the chosen one and he was born from the force because plagueis and sidious were trying to play god but turns out i guess They weren't pulling the right thread, (laughs) according to the Coven of Witches. My god. Way to go, Leslie. I just, I don't understand, Kathleen. Why hire people that just don't know Star Wars? Or they just see Star Wars in a way that doesn't make sense in the story? You hire the wrong type of people. You got so many dedicated and passionate fans on the internet who create their own stories, and respect the lore of Star Wars. But I guess, no, you want to go in a different direction that caters to a new audience. A new audience that, frankly, they don't care. They don't take this stuff seriously. Don't give a damn about anything else. Probably can't even look after themselves. When us nerds, I guess, us geeks, we cared about it. But every time you put something out there, Every time you put a mediocre or garbage project, it just makes us hate Star Wars. It just makes us don't want anything to do with Star Wars. Episode 3 of The Acolyte made me ashamed 
I felt embarrassed to be a Star Wars fan. That was dreadful. But apparently Kathleen cried when she watched The Acolyte. That's what I heard. I don't know if that's true. I could honestly believe it. (laughs) It's funny when Star Wars never ceases to amaze me on how much worse it can get. I thought Lizzo was bad, but holy cow. (laughs) At least Marvel's trying to fix their problems, from what I've heard. And it seems like Kathleen is just doubling down on all the nonsense. All these weird decisions she's making. I mean, I know why. And it's silly. And when we criticize it and explain why it's silly, she just categorize us as misogynists, bigots. Are, are, you, are you kidding me? I'm not denying the fact that we do have bad eggs and they need to learn to be respectful. But again, it's not a it's not a perfect world. But don't put us in that group just because we didn't like the thing that you like that I guess you consider a masterpiece. And to those who get the early access and do those cringy reactions, don't worry, I've done it myself when I was younger. Seriously, are are you really going to die on that hill defending this show to preserve your early access? For I know you might actually like the show, and that's fine, but it's okay to admit some faults that's in the show. I find it hard to believe that some people would say there's nothing wrong with it. Uh, Hell, I like Batman and Robin, and that's not a good movie. I like it because it's funny. So yeah, really think about it before you start opening your mouth, assuming that it's racist people that's disliking all your reaction videos. It could be people who are not taking your opinions seriously, because it just sounds ridiculous. Sorry. I really am sorry, but that's how everyone sees you. You're just... No one takes you seriously. And I guess to end it off, Lucasfilm, you did this to yourself. You hired people who are nasty to others. Who are nasty at people that cried because their childhood hero returned in the way that we expected him to return. But then, in retrospect, he will still end up being that pathetic, homeless guy in Octu. And the fact you encourage it, and the fact that you have people that don't respect the lore, and then just name call us, and then the new fans that you gathered, the ones who don't really care about the main thing, the main appeal that makes Star Wars special, they they just tell us to F off. I don't want any part of that. I don't want anything to do with it. Acolyte might get some viewership because of episode 3, but I guarantee you this, Skeleton Crew will bomb. It would not get the viewership that you hope you get. And I hope it will be a huge wake up call to you. Because I've had enough. I've had enough with your nonsense. I've had enough of showrunners and writers telling us that we're just racist and bigots. I've had enough of the bickering between fandoms. Because it's no more than an endless cycle of hatred. And it's done because of your actions. And I could make those easy rage clickbait videos, but I won't. It's not worth it. It's not healthy for me. I want to love Star Wars. I don't want to hate it. So I'm leaving it to those guys to do that sort of entertainment because I've had enough. And I'm pretty sure everyone else has had enough. We have had enough. After I finish The Acolyte with my co-host, Josh, because we talk about the show weekly, and so... I'm going to stick to it to the end and create a review. It was going to be the High Republic comic book review, but now it's evolved into the Acolyte review, and it will be my final Star Wars review because I have no further interest into watching any future television or films from Lucasfilm until they make a change, until Kathleen Kennedy either goes or something has to be done because this is ridiculous. But even so... The brand is too far gone. It's too... It's damaged. You damaged it. You only have yourself to blame. And don't want anything to do with it. The only thing I care about is the video games. Mostly the third Jedi game. Because Cal Kestis is the best character that came out in Disney's era of Star Wars. And those guys actually give a shit about the lore. And can actually write characters. Whoop. There goes my no swear rule. But that's okay. I'm done. Have a nice life, Lucasfilm and Kathleen Kennedy, because I've had enough. Goodbye.